All right, so thank you all for tuning in today. Uh, my name is Jeff Badu, and I'm a licensed certified public accountant in the state of Illinois. I'm the owner and practitioner of Badu Tax Services, and essentially the firm specializes in tax preparation, tax planning, and tax representation for individuals and businesses. The firm's overall mission is to help people maximize their financial security um, through the different service offerings, as well as um, various educational um, products or just different educational materials. And so really, as far as today, um, the agenda is to talk about a little bit about the firm and talk about the tax preparation industry, um, some career opportunities within the firm itself, as well as um, the compensation structure of the firm. And then if you are interested in the firm, essentially how, how you get started, and you can always ask any questions throughout the presentation, and then I'll be talking about some basic, um, you know, some basic tax preparation training or tips and things like that. So we'll be going through a 1040 demonstration. And this presentation will last no more, no longer than an hour. Um, it could end earlier than that. So just, just as a budget, this presentation will be um, no longer than an hour. And so let's kick it off really with a quick video. This basically summarizes the firm in a nutshell. Okay, so it seems it seems as if the video was given um, issues issues with the audio. Um, I'm not sure it should have it should have been playing fine on it, but I'm actually gonna I'm actually gonna go back to the video source itself and try to see if I can play it on YouTube or something. Give me one second. Okay, so here it goes. So please let me know if you can hear it on this side. Okay, so it seems like we're having some issues with the video itself. Um, so we can we can go ahead and skip that for now. But essentially, what the video was talking about was describing the firm and the different services and things things of that nature. Um, so essentially, Badu Tax Services LLC is a tax firm that specializes in tax preparation, tax planning, and tax representation services for individuals and businesses across the U.S. and really. As I stated before, the mission is to help people maximize their financial security. Um, I'm currently the owner of the firm, and the firm essentially utilizes industry-leading technology to provide efficiency or efficient and effective tax services. For example, the firm has a mobile app, which you can download on your Apple and Android devices. And essentially what you can do is you can actually go through a tax basically a list of questions um, or a tax preparation scenario. You can pick you know, single, married, um, just different things like that. And then you can actually submit the return or you can submit that information to me or to the firm. It goes into the centralized database. Um, you can actually take a picture of your W-2. You can take, um, you can basically put anything you want. There's a chat feature in the app. So really, it essentially uh, maximizes the efficiency standpoint. So instead of a client having to come physically into the office and go through a questionnaire, you know, they can be in their bed watching TV and do the same thing and take them about 10 minutes or so. 
everything comes to me. I put it into the software, um, and essentially I analyze I analyze the data and give them basically the end result. And then the firm the firm uses a tax software called Drake Drake Tax Software, so that's really uh, one of the industry leading softwares um, for tax for tax services. And so. I'll talk about this more later, but I personally use the desktop version, um, but the tax preparers that I work with use the online version, which is a much easier version and it's more for a simplified tax return. And then there's also an app called Gruntworks. And so let's say you have a W-2 or you have a list of 100, um, 100 trade and transactions or stock transactions, you can actually submit the form to them directly and they'll help import it or they'll help break it down into an Excel format where you can import it into the software and then it shoots all the data out. And also the company has a centralized process. Um, so you have a call center. Um, basically, if you were to call um, the firm's number, essentially it's going to get rerouted to the call center, to somebody in the U.S. who picks up all the calls within 10 seconds or so. And then they can reroute it however way you want it. You can speak to me, you can speak to one of the preparers, you can speak to, or you can speak to them or leave a message or something. And then the firm also utilizes virtual assistants a lot. Um, so this is more so for checking emails. Um, we actually have a support line now where if you email support at badutaxservices.com, you'll get a quick note saying, hey, we've received your message and we will be responding. Um, within the next um, say hour or so for example so i have a virtual assistant that's monitoring that email address and then also they help out with um there are some virtual assistants that prepare some tax returns um and so my tax preparers or my independent contractors are also allowed to use their own virtual assistants if they wanted to and then also industry leading marketing tools you know things like yelp linkedin premium um doing some seo facebook twitter instagram all the different tools out there we essentially use it and then we have clients in about 24 states right now looking to get to all 50 by the end of next tax season and so that's really a goal of the firm and then also to attain a thousand clients by the end of next tax season and right now we're at about 350 and so basically, before the firm was formed, I personally had about 100 or so clients. So the firm itself has tripled in size within just a year alone. And so really about the tax preparation industry. Um, okay, so before, before I get into that, I do have a question in the chat feature. So do they have a, a upload feature for 1099 and non-1099 self-employed options? So yes, you can upload any tax form that you have. So it can be a W-2, it can be a 1099, it can be a stock transaction, a um, you know a 1099 INT, 1099 DIV, a 1090. It can be any 1098. It can be any form, and it can get you. You just take a picture of it, and basically what happens is that as soon as you take a picture, you send it to me. It gets deleted from your phone. Um, so it's end-to-end -end encrypted and essentially everything comes back on my end so only i can see it where i have my own username and password that i can log into the centralized database in order to pull that information so in general about the tax preparation industry um so as of february 2016 so this is the february 2016 ibis world report um, this is a report that I use for, I recommend for all my business owners. I work with a lot of businesses. So the firm itself has about 70% individuals, about 30% businesses. Um, so this IBIS World Report that I was reading as of last year, and the new one is essentially, um, I'm going to analyze that data as well. But you can see a pretty similar trend. So 2016 is still pretty accurate. So as of February 2016, it is a $10.3 billion industry. It has a 4.5% annual growth rate, um, which is pretty good. It's dominated by a few firms, including H&R Block, 
Jackson Hewitt, and TurboTax. Um, but the problem with the industry is that there are plenty of flaws in them. Um, and I don't know if you, I don't know if anyone knows, but essentially H&R Block doesn't have the best reputation in the world. Um, they're more so known for sort of overcharging people, not providing good service. The reason why is because their, their preparers aren't necessarily trained as um, true tax preparers. So the reality with the tax preparation industry is that anybody in the world or anybody in the U.S. can become a tax preparer. All you need is a clean criminal background. You don't need any prior experience. You don't need any certifications. You don't need, you don't need any trainings. You can literally start your tax firm, you know, re register as an LLC or whatever you want to do, and go through the background check process, and essentially now you own a tax firm. And so back in 2014, the IRS actually lost a case against somebody who was preparing taxes who was not licensed. And so, or that's how, at least, that's how the story has been told is that somebody sued the IRS because they weren't happy with that requirement that they had to have certifications and trainings. So they lost the case and now the tax preparation industry or tax preparers are essentially unregulated. Um, by unregulated meaning that they don't have to have anything other than a, crim a clean criminal background. And then even that, they can actually get somebody who has a clean criminal background and then they can register as a criminal to that firm because you can still be a criminal and pay and prepare tax returns as long as you have a firm that's properly registered. And so how do I combat this personally as a tax firm and ensuring that you know we're maintaining integrity and all those good things is that my preparers essentially have to go through a background check. Or if you have a, a certification or a license or like if you're a CPA, for example, you've automatically um, you've automatically basically gone through a background check, so there's no need for that. Uh, but anybody that's joining that's not properly licensed or certified or anything like that, they have to go through a mandatory background check. Um, and some other flaws with the industry, you know, it's um, it's it's still brick and mortar. Uh, we we recently did a survey or a study. I worked closely with a company called Happy Tax, and they did a survey, and essentially they said. You know, seven out of 10 people keep their tax preparers every year. And 60% of people, or 70% of people, actually, 60% of people are still doing tax returns through a professional. And then the other 40% are doing it on their own. And about 20 or so years ago, it's been the same stat. So technology really hasn't changed anything. It just made it more convenient for people to do taxes on their own. But just know that there's still a very high demand for people, um, for professionals to do taxes. And the reason why is because it's complicated. Taxes are not the easiest thing in the world. And it goes far beyond the actual tax return itself. And so, exactly. So people are literally losing millions of dollars, you know, doing it by themselves. As a matter of fact, um, back in 2015, the IRS reported that they had about a billion dollars or so in refunds that people did not claim, either because they didn't file, they filed incorrectly, um, you know, maybe some type of issue, but a billion dollars was held by the IRS back in 2015, um, just from people not, basically not doing, you know, not, not filing properly. And so really with this industry, here's the key. It says rising employment will increase demand despite competition from online providers. And so this is very important to note is that the more people that are working, the more people that have to file tax returns. Basically, everybody needs to file a tax return. So the potential to have clients is unlimited in this industry. Um, even though you have the H&R blocks, the turbo tax, you, there's still a very huge niche. And as a matter of fact, my firm soon will be acquiring other firms, other smaller firms, and incorporating the system or the technologies within their firms as well. Um, but the firm itself, two, I would say two competitive advantages is one, it's very tech, it's a tech-based company. 
you know, the mobile app. Um, also have the, um, basically there's an online portal where you can upload certain documents to. You have the client gets their own login. They have their own PIN number. They can't reset the password unless I, unless they know the PIN number, or unless I give it to them. Um, and essentially just, you know, it's a very convenient process. I mean, even throughout tax season, 90% of the work that I did was virtual. I have some clients and the only way that I know that they're human beings is from their social security number. So some clients I've never seen in my life, I've never even talked to before on the phone and they're still pretty comfortable. And the main reason why, and I, I definitely encourage, you know, people to get the, the certification, the licenses and things like that, because that's definitely going to help um, as far as credibility and things like that. And so, go back here. And so really, actually, let me do something really quick. <clears throat> let me find, <clears throat> let me go back to my join.me app just so, because I actually did close out of, there we go. Okay, so back to the presentation. Um, basically, so as far as career opportunities go, um, you have the opportunity to become an independent contractor with the firm at the moment. Um, an independent contractor is basically someone who's not an employee, you know, you, you can work from anywhere you want, and you're not under the control of anyone. So if you want to work from home, if you want to work from a Starbucks, which I don't recommend, I would recommend you to be in a secure location if you're doing tax returns. Um, basically anywhere you want that's safe, secure, and it's convenient for, for you. You get to manage your own clients. So if your mom is your client, that's your client. Um, you, you manage that, you talk to them, you do it however way you want. And so really the firm acts as a support function or giving you the support, the tools and the resources. So just like a McDonald's, you know, basically what the company is, it's a franchise system where people can use the McDonald's logo, the McDonald's marketing materials, everything of that nature, and they pay a franchise fee. Basically, I mean, McDonald's is, you know, it's a pretty hefty franchise fee, but think about how much money you can actually make owning a McDonald's franchise. And so really when the firm was, um, was launched, you know, basically one of my, one of my preparers, one of my business partners essentially recommended that I incorporate this model. And, and so this allows me to basically run the firm but still have other people who are interested. Maybe they don't want to work for the TurboTax. The, I mean, not TurboTax, but the H&R Blocks. Maybe they don't want to just start their own thing or they don't want to work for these giant big four public accounting firms. So really this allows you an opportunity to own your own sort of business within a company, um, receive the trainings, the back office support, you know, the virtual assistance, the support line, I mean, if, if, if a client comes to you after tax season and you're like, you know, there's no way I'm going to be able to answer this question, you can just direct the calls directly to me or directly to the back office and we'll take care of all of that for you, free of charge. And then so you also get your own business cards, um, entrepreneurship coaching. So there will be various trainings and coaches throughout the year. They're not mandatory. They're optional. And then you have the ability to, so this is very important, but you have the ability to um, leverage other businesses such as life insurance, credit repair, maybe you have a life and health license. And you know, it's, so let me share you a little bit of background. So with the tax prep, you know, people have trust in you. If somebody's going to give you their social security number, they trust you a lot. Um, so this allows you the opportunity to have the trust factor. So I know what a lot of businesses, for example, financial advisory, it's more on a need basis. But from a tax preparation standpoint, everybody needs, everybody needs to file their taxes base. So you can, you can walk on the street and find somebody who needs to file their taxes. But it's very hard, or I should say you have a much lower chance of finding somebody who needs credit repair, who needs a new life insurance policy, so this is a really good way to tap into new clients 
And I encourage everyone to leverage their businesses. For me, for example, you know, I, I own a real estate company. And I also do, you know, so, so basically with the real estate company, it allows me to attract a lot of real estate clients because I, you know, I, I, I do some wholesaling to some, some various high net worth individuals. And real estate is just, real estate taxes can get very complicated. That's somewhere you will probably not find people that are on H&R Block or, their, or TurboTax, or they're probably in an audit right now. Um, so if, if you have a life and health license, you know, you see somebody's tax return, you see they're undercover at their, you know, they only have their work life insurance. You can easily say, hey, you, know, you might want to get something outside of that. I don't recommend overselling. You know, you should, to me, I, I would say you should be a value provider in that standpoint. You know, you should tell them that, you know, hey, you know, you shouldn't just say you should buy life insurance. You should say, based on what I've seen from your tax return, based on some of the things that you've told me, I believe that it will be beneficial for you to increase your coverage or look at different options. Because once you leave your job, you don't, you no longer have life insurance and you leave yourself at risk. You know, that sounds more of a value provider than somebody who's just trying to sell something or credit repair. You know, just tell them the reason why they need it. Um, but it can be any business out there in the world or so many different opportunities out there. I also specialize heavily in the ride sharing industry because I own a car rental company uh, for a lot of ride sharing drivers. So a lot of my clients are actually in the, in the sharing economy. Um, so you also have the opportunity. So I did mention that, you know, we use Drake Tax software, but there's another software called Intuit Pro Tax Online, um, which these are both cloud-based softwares. I do recommend using Drake Tax. The nice thing with Intuit is that it has um, something called Intuit Link. So you can send a client a link, basically, and they can start uploading documents. They can basically like the mobile app but it's now a desktop version or it's now, you know, a different form of the mobile app. So it's very convenient. It's very convenient if you want to get some information out of the client without actually meeting with them. Um, so what you can, what you might be able to do is just use Intuit ProTax for that purpose, but do all your tax returns through Drake. So Drake is a beautiful software. I mean, and one of the trainer modules I actually do go through um, this will be later in the year, like closer to tax season, but I'll be going through like basically the Drake training session. And so with compensation, um, so essentially you get to keep 70% of the tax prep fees in the first year, where basically the firm keeps 30% as a quote unquote franchise fee to handle administrative costs, growth and things like that. Um, and second year, you get to keep 75% um, but if you're what's known as a super performer, you get to keep 85% in the second year. So every contractor has to sign an independent contract agreement um, at the beginning of tax season or before you know you go through the train before you go through the more advanced trainings and things like that. So you'll see all these numbers in here. And so what a super performer is essentially is one that attains at least 25 clients in their first year. Um, can demonstrate running their own business with limited support. So basically, as, as time goes on, you'll become more comfortable. You'll know how certain things flow. Um, so really, this is passing on the, the savings to you because you don't have to utilize my resources as much. And then, you know, have, have to have the proper credentials, such as a certified public accountant license, CPA, or um, an enrolled agent, or even be an attorney. Um, also have the ability to offer, you know, other lines of tax services within the company. So right now, this is more so for tax preparation, but you can also do tax representation where you can actually, um, quote unquote, defend people against the IRS. Um, or you can also do tax planning where you, instead of just meeting at the end of the year with a client or instead of just meeting them during tax season, you actually, there's actually a package where you can essentially um, talk to them about different areas. Maybe they're not saving enough for retirement. So let's structure that out. Let's build out a tax plan at the beginning of the year, um, just so that we monitor it towards the year and implement different strategies. So it's more strategic consulting basis. And then you also have the ability to prepare business tax returns. So in the first year, 
I don't expect anyone to prepare business tax returns because they can get a little complicated. Um, in reality, they actually are easier than individual tax returns, but it's just that individual tax returns are easier to start out with. You know, you get more comfortable versus a business. And then tax prep fee um, from an individual standpoint can be, it can range from $150 to $300. Um, businesses can range from 250 all the way up to 800. I have a client who pays, actually pay a thousand because they added the tax planning component. Um, you can even do some bookkeeping if you want, however way you want to do it. Um, and then there's also a 50% discount for undergraduate college students. So that's that's something that's very important to keep in mind is that once you get them young, you know, they'll stick with you forever. I have a client who she was basically like my third client and we she started doing taxes through me in 2012, I believe. And basically five years later, she still she still stuck with me every single year. You know, I know that she's going to send me that text that, hey, I need, I need to get my taxes done. And then also you have the opportunity to offer incentives or referral bonuses. So typically it's about $20, um, $20 referral bonus for individuals. So if you refer me somebody, hey, I'll throw you $20. It can be in a gift card, cash, or anything. I do recommend that you apply that bonus to their next year's tax return so that they can keep, um, basically so that they can become a client or they have, or they have some sort of um, vested interest. So the requirements really to become a tax preparer, even in the first year, you have to have some sort of prior tax knowledge. Um, believe it or not, by taking this training, you automatically qualify for that. Um, preferably have some credentials, you know, CPA or enrolled agent, although it's not necessary, you know, due to what I explained earlier about the tax preparation industry, you must pass a background check if you're not properly credentialed. And then also demonstrate a willingness to learn. You know, this is not, it's not an easy industry. Doing taxes is not the hardest thing in the world, but the industry itself, you have to know how to really manage clients. Um, you have to know how to meet the needs of clients. And then really, so in order to get started, there is a $100 enrollment fee. And what this covers is your background check, your business cards, some marketing materials. You also get your own email address. So anything that's admin related, you know, you can call this your franchise fee. Let's just let's just put it as that. You know, only a hundred dollars to get started. You can pay that electronically. You can do it however way you want. Um, and one thing I would like to mention: this is not a network marketing company. You know, you do not get paid for bringing in a million agents and things like that. This is not one of those businesses. This is more of a McDonald's, more of a franchise system, where you come in. You do, you know, you do whatever you have to do on the tax side. I'll train you, I'll coach you. And then I expect you to basically, you know, become better and better and eventually have this large giant database of, of tax clients, essentially. Um, so this is not one of those, you know, you come in, you recruit a million people and you stop working. You know, so you basically work, you do, you do have to put in the work in order to get paid, in order to get the results. Um, so that's just one thing to keep in mind. So really, next steps is if you want, if you are interested in signing up, you can set up a follow-up call with me. My number is 773-679-7198. You can go to badutaxservices.com and schedule a quick 30-minute um, appointment. You have to go through the background check, and then you have to sign an independent contractor agreement. Then you have to obtain a personal um, tax identification number or prepare a tax identification number with the IRS, which of course the IRS has lost another case. And so now that number is free to get. It used to be about 50 bucks, uh, but now it's actually free. And then also go through some more advanced training. So today will be more like introduction, basic training, um, but we'll also be going through some more advanced, you know, going through some of the the independent contractor tax returns, like today we'll be focused on the W-2, the, the, um, the employee tax return. And then also then the, the last step really is to begin marketing and start making your money. You know, this is something where you can grow as fast as you want. Um, you know, invite some family members, invite some guests and things like that. You know, just, just tell them that what you do, like, hey, I just got involved in doing taxes. 
I'm working with this firm. They pro they provide me everything I need. Um, so I would love to do your taxes. I'll tell you one thing. I used to do taxes for free, you know, back when I started. So it is a little hard to gain somebody's trust, especially if you're not an accountant, you're not a CPA. Um, but if you know people, and as soon as you tell them you do taxes, everybody's going to want to jump on a bandwagon as soon as January through April hits. There's always going to be that one person that wants you to do their taxes. So with that, let's take about a minute or so. If you have any questions, um, I'll, you know, I'll basically pause for a quick minute, and then we'll go into number two of the segment, which should take about 15 to 20 minutes. We'll basically be going through a tax return um, or going through the 1040 form to show you some of the different components and some of the different strategies you can use. So if you do have a question, please use the chat feature. Um, just shoot out, shoot out a question, um, and and we can we can go from there. All right, so. It looks like we don't have we don't have any questions for now, but if you do, if any questions come across, just please feel free. You know, use the chat feature, and then we can. Um, I'll be more than happy to stop at any time. Now, this section you might have a lot of questions, so let's get right to it. So basically, the basic tax preparation training. There are no slides or anything to this, so we're just gonna get straight right to it. Um, basically, what I'm gonna go through is a 1040 form. So essentially what this form is, this is the form you use in order to, in order to prepare your taxes or in order to um, submit your taxes to the IRS. So the first, the first section, you know, you have your information section where you have your name, you know, first name, last name, social security number, all that basic info, then your filing status. So this is very important. You know, you can, you can file a single, marry, file, and join me separately head of household and qualifying widow, widow or widower. Um, so one thing to note is that head of household, just because you, you know, basically you live alone and you live with, basically you live with nobody and you pay your rent on time. That does not mean that you're head of household. You have to be with a qualifying person, such as a child, a relative or something like that. Um, there's certain different rules that you must meet. But typically, if you live with a child, you're a head of household. And then, and also, if you're legally married, you cannot file a single. You have to choose between married filing jointly and married filing separately. It is most beneficial to file as married filing jointly because certain deductions you're entitled to when you're a married couple. And so it says, what if you're a payee for someone? Um, so basically, if if you're a payee for someone, um, like for SSI and things like that, I mean, it's I would say if if you take care of that person, they can essentially um, they can claim you. Or in order to be head of household, there are different rules and specifications and different things like that. But just know that just because you take care of someone might not qualify you. But if you take care of, let's say you take care of your mom or something, um, you can probably claim head of household on that, as long as she doesn't work or anything like that or, or different things. But, or let's say you're the child or you, you're the one that lives with your parents. Um, they could claim you as head of household as long as they take care of you. So as long as they take care of you, and I'm sure you know what it means to take care of somebody, they're paying you rent, things like that, you can probably claim them. It doesn't matter if you have SSI and different things like that. Um, you know, you can still file a tax return even if you have these different non non traditional income sources. And you know, with SSI, most most people don't have to pay taxes on SSI or Social Security income, so that's just something to keep in mind. Um, and then with exemptions, you are always entitled to claim yourself unless somebody claims you. If you're married, you always can claim your spouse, or basically you both claim each other. However many kids you have is not just limited to four. You can have as many kids as you want. 
and claim as many kids as you want. Um, and if they're under the age of 17, they get what's known, or you get what's known as a child tax credit, which is a nice thousand dollar check that the IRS will write for you for each um, child you have, or the maximum they'll do. And so just, just keep that in mind. If somebody's claiming you, you cannot check this box to claim yourself. Um, you have to, you have to basically be depend or independent of yourself in order to claim yourself. And no, you cannot claim other people's kids or anything unless you have the legal authority to do so, or unless you're legally able to claim them, meaning you have to be taking care of them, you have to live with them. And the IRS is very strict about this. They actually came out with what's known as a due diligence requirement, or they they held a lot of people's refunds last year because because of the PATH Act, um, because certain people were claiming people that you know, didn't belong to them. They would pay somebody, hey, I'll give you half of my refund if I claim your kid. Well, you can't do that anymore. You can actually go to jail for that. Okay, so we have a question. So what if someone claims a child who is an adult but under 25 and that child also files? So what if someone claims their child who is an adult under 25 and that child also files? So the nice thing is anybody can file a tax return. It doesn't matter who claims you. You can be claimed by you can be claimed by your parents. You can claim yourself. Everybody is legally entitled to file their own tax return. If you're claimed, you just can't check the box um, of your basically yourself. And also, and also, if they are so, if they are under the age of 25, then essentially, right? If they file, they just can't claim that deduction. Or they can't they can't claim that exemption essentially. So you you ultimately so you as the one that's the dependent, or you're the one that's independent of the dependent. You're taking care of the one that's under 25. You get the exemption. You get the all the write offs, the benefits. They can still file. They just don't get the exemptions and things like that. So we got some income sources. You know you have wages, salaries. This is where your W-2 income goes. You know box one. This is where it goes. Um, taxable interest, you know, if you're receiving checks from loaning out money to people, things like that. Tax exempt interest, that's really for um, municipal bonds and things like that. So any state or local bonds, any dividends. Um, so if you have qualified dividends or if you have dividends that meet certain requirements, you're allowed to claim what's known as capital gains um, tax rates, essentially. So those are much lower rates. They range from zero to 20%. Um, so if you're in a 10 to 15% tax bracket, you pay 0%. And then if you're within, um, basically if you're in between, most people pay about 15%. If you're at the highest tax bracket, the 39.6%, then you're going to pay 20% on any dividends or long-term capital gains. And then taxable refunds, this is um, a little bit too complicated to go over in a basic training. But basically, if you received a tax refund, um, from an itemized deduction, or if you received a state tax refund and you itemize what's known as an itemized deduction, we'll go through that later, you have to pay taxes on a refund that you receive. Um, alimony received, so you can actually, anytime somebody receives alimony payments, um, spousal payments from you, um, you, they have to claim it on their tax return, you can claim it as a, um, as a tax deduction. Child support, unfortunately, is not tax deductible. Um, you cannot write off child support. And then business income, um, we'll talk about this more in the advanced training. But this is where you report any self-employed income. So let's say you became an independent contractor with a firm. I'll issue you what's known as a 1099. And then you report um, all, your, all your business income um, as well as your expenses. So maybe you bought a computer. That hundred dollar fee that you you know enrollment fee you pay you, you get to write all of that off, and the rule of thumb and um, with business is when in doubt write it off basically. So most things are write offs. There's only a few things that can't be written off, um, such as penalties. Um, you know basically anything that's not illegal you can write it off. And then this is where this is capital gains. So you use a Schedule D for this. Um, basically, this is anytime you sell a stock, anytime you sell real estate or anything like that, 
you have to put it into the capital gains section. And these are favorable, if they're long-term, they receive favorable capital gains treatments. So anytime you pull out of an IRA early, this is, I've seen a lot, this mistake a lot of times when I was filing taxes last year, that people were pulling out from their 401k, uh, okay, I already took the hit. But then I tell them, well, did you notice another 10% hit? And they're like, wait, where did that come from? So you get hit 10% extra, a, a penalty, if you pull out of your 401k early and you don't have a defined reason for it or you don't borrow from it. Um, same thing applies with certain annuities and things like that. And then line 17 is really for your Schedule E or your real estate. So if you, if you own a rental property or if you own a partnership or an S-Corp, this is where you would put. So it's basically like a Schedule C but now it's for rental properties um, and different things like that. Like I said, we'll be going through, so we'll be going through Schedule C, Schedule E, all the different schedules, except for to deal with a Schedule F yet. Um, so it's very uncommon, that's for farmers. And so we'll be going through all of that in the advanced training. And then unemployment compensation. So if you're collecting unemployment checks, that is actually taxable. Um, but if you're collecting, workers comp that is non-taxable and this is where so social security is actually taxable so this is where the irs really teach people and that this is this is what's known as double taxation not only do you pay the taxes going into social security you have to pay the taxes going out essentially and so that's that's something to keep in mind and then you know you have other income sources so anything, anything that's other income based, you also have to report it. They all get combined and they ultimately become your income. And then adjusted gross income, these are things to write off. Let's call them write offs. So educator expenses up to $250. Um, so if you're a teacher, pre-K through 12, you can write that off. Certainly if you're an artist, um, you, can, you can write off certain expenses. A health savings account. Highly recommended up to $3,400 for 2014, I mean 2016. Um, or actually 2017 tax year, you can write off up to $3,400 in a health savings account. Any moving expenses you can write off. Um, so self-employment tax. So anytime you're, you have a Schedule C or you're self-employed, you have to pay taxes on a, you have to pay double taxes um, basically from a Social Security standpoint. So the IRS basically allows you to write off half of it. And if you have a self-employed um, retirement plan, you can write off, write that off. Self, any health insurance you have self-employed, you can write it off. Any penalties from CDs and things like that, you can write off. Alimony paid, traditional IRA, student loan interest up to $2,500. Tuition and fees up to $4,000. And then what's known as domestic production activities, which is a little more on the advanced side. All that gets combined into it, um, what's known as your deductions or your adjustments and that gets your adjusted gross income. And then down here, you have your tax credit. So you have, you can either choose the standard deduction or the itemized deduction. So standard deduction is $6,300 for a single. Um, so you're allowed to choose either one. So itemized, you can use the Schedule A. We'll talk about that more in the advanced training. Everybody gets an exemption for each dependent you're claiming or for yourself. You subtract that out, you get what's known as taxable income. You take taxable income, you multiply it by a certain rate. Um, that's known as your tax. And then ultimately you get your, um, your net tax liability. And then you start going to the credits. So you have, for example, the foreign tax credit, um, dependent, child and dependent care credit, education credit. So if you go to school, you, know, you pay certain tuition up to $2,500, you can write that off. Um, known as the American Opportunity Credit. And then, so some of these, I would like to say they're refundable and non-refundable. So the American Opportunity Credit, you can actually um, basically get a $1,000 check. So that's for undergrad college students. They can write off a certain amount up to $2,500 and $1,000 of that would be in the form of a refund check. Anything you contribute to retirement, certain people can deduct that um, or up to a certain amount. The child tax credit for each kid you have, you have about $1,000 that you can write off. So for even for grad school, you can actually write off um, certain, you, even as a grad student, you get what's known as a lifetime learning credit. 
um, which is which is a two thousand dollar credit that you can get basically for the rest of your life every time you go through education. And then, so yeah, you add all of those up, um, and essentially credits are just you know they're like incentives for you to do certain things. Like the IRS wants you to have kids, they want you to save for retirement, they want you to go to school, they want you to take care of the elders, um, they want you to be efficient in your energy, and so. You subtract all of that from your net tax liability, then you get your total credits. Then you also subtract any, these are also credits, so self-employment tax. Um, and also, or actually these are additions. So these are the credits, these are things that you subtract. And these are additions, these are things you add back into your, your taxes basis. So self-employment tax, any unreported Social Security and Medicare tax, that 10% on IRAs. Um, scholarships are not taxable as long as they're used for educational expenses, like tuition and fees. But if you don't use them, I mean, I personally never paid taxes on scholarships, so you kind of have to use judgment with that. Um, but yeah, so that 10% on IRAs, you would need to add that back. Household employment taxes, never seen that before. First time home buyer credit repayment. So if you bought a home back in a recession and they gave you that credit, you actually have to pay it back. Um, so those are really, and also if you don't have health insurance, you can be penalized for that. Um, so those are add backs to your taxes. And then you have, so these are subtractions, these are add backs, and now you're back to more subtractions. So you have any federal income taxes you paid, write that off. Any estimated taxes, certain self-employed people have to make estimated taxes. You have to pay that. Earn income credit. Um, essentially, earn income credit. So for certain people that work, the IRS wants you to um, gain a benefit. So they allow you to get a credit, additional tax credit. That's also one. American Opportunity Credit. This is what I was talking about, the extra $1,000 bucks or 1000 bucks. Net premium tax credit, not too much to worry about. Any excess, if you pay too much Social Security taxes, write that off. Um, so you, so basically the way it works, you take your taxable income, multiply it by a certain rate, which is from a table. Um, luckily, you don't have to calculate all this. We have software to do all of this for you. This is to just go through um, the, the, the details of the tax return. So you multiply that and you get the tax. You subtract the credits. These are non-refundable credits. Then you add back your taxes. You subtract your refundable credits, which this is where you can get a refund if these um, net to a net tax benefit. So once you get all of that, you either get a refund or you get a tax due. If you get a refund, you can do it via direct deposit, via check, or you can apply it to next year's taxes. Um, and if you owe, you can set up a payment plan. You can pay it directly. You might owe a penalty. And then be sure that whoever prepares a tax return um, well, you have to sign it. If you're doing electronically, you don't have to physically sign it. But whoever prepares your tax return, be sure that they have this section filled out. Because I know some people don't, um, which leaves them even more at fault. For the tax return, you're always liable for, like uh, you as a tax taxpayer, you, you as an individual, you're liable for whatever goes on your tax return. So I recommend that you check, always check these things. Make sure your taxpayer's name is on there and make sure that nothing is wrong on your tax return. So that's really it for the presentation. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to um, shoot it in the chat box. I'll, I'll, leave, I'll leave a minute or so for any questions and you, you can ask it throughout the presentation, but definitely thank, thank you all for tuning in today. This will be recorded for future use as I was stated before um, and it, you know, it's the tax preparation industry is a very, very, very profitable industry. I don't recommend people to do their taxes on their own if they're not a tax professional, because there are tiny little things that you have to know in order to in order to do the right thing on your tax return. It might look easy. Certain things might be easy. You know, you plug in a number here and it gives you that. But taxes in general are not the easiest thing in the world. So if there are there are no questions, I'll um, 
I'll conclude. And I definitely thank everyone for tuning in today. Once again, my name is Jeff Badu. I'm the owner of Badu Tax Services. And I look forward to look forward to either you join the team, either you becoming a client. And I thank you all. Have a great rest of the day.